Education has been a theme throughout Alma Cárdenas Rubio's life. She and other members of her family rose from poverty to achieve more than 10 college and university degrees. Leading Alma to a lifelong journey, dedicated to changing the lives of others through education, Mother Oralia from Michoacán, Mexico, had only a fifth grade education, and her father, Lázaro, dropped out of school in the ninth grade. But he told his five daughters and showed them from an early age, education would be their key to success. It was a constant sound, you must go to college. You don't have a choice. That's an expectation that I see that all of you are going to complete. Education started off with books at home. No matter what kind of poverty level that we were living in, it started from a book at home. After receiving his GED, serving in the military, and working at the post office for 18 years, Lázaro Cárdenas decided he wanted more for himself and his five daughters. At the age of 43, he went to law school. And to witness that he was constantly going to school and my mother trying to study the English language, you knew that you had to do the same thing. It, it was modeled, it was expected. Alma moved to Brownsville with her family when she was in fifth grade and attended Egley Elementary. From her teacher, she learned many lessons, including the importance of leadership. I still remember my fifth grade teacher. Her name was Elena Harris. I used to talk a lot in class. And rather than to uh, say, you know, you talk too much, she put me to be the safety patrol leader. So she had me out in the street doing the safety patrol, talking to everybody that was passing by. That was my first leadership position. Alma says her junior high teachers at Olivera Middle School gave her encouragement, but credits a teacher at Porter High School that helped her get through one of the most difficult times in her life. And I had Mr. Neely. He was the greatest impact in my life. I was failing pre-cal. I needed to graduate. My parents had just gotten divorced at the time, and I remember going through so much at that time. And I remember him telling me, okay, if you do this science project, I will give you 100 in pre-cal so that you can graduate. Little did Alma know that last minute project would win not only city and regional science fair competitions, but would take her all the way to the International Science Fair in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It also earned her a scholarship to UTBTSC in 1991. At UTBTSC, Alma, like many students, had to balance her life between school, work, and raising a family. Many of her professors encouraged her to keep going and never give up. Mr. Binder, I remember him so vividly. I said, sir, I can't do it. I have a family. I, I, I have two jobs. There's no way. I got to quit. He says, you're not quitting. You will finish the classes. You will come here, and you can do it. And it was professors like that. And she didn't give up. Alma went on to earn her bachelor's degree in 1994, a master's degree in 1997, and recently a superintendent's certificate. She worked in the classroom for six years before moving up through the ranks, first as an assistant principal and then, in 2002, her first job as principal. And then I had Johnny Pineda who said, you're ready to take a school, but you're going to take a school that is in the southmost area, that is in portables, and I think you can do it. I probably cried every day. I probably thought, what am I doing here? But for the first time, I understood what faith was all about. It was about believing that somebody had given you this opportunity, and it was to come and impact probably 90% of the kids that went through what you went through. Remember we talked about... For the last eight years, she has instilled that same faith in her students, helping them prepare and believe they will be ready, not just for high school, but for college as well. What are we preparing for? We're preparing for high school, what are you preparing for? I would not trade middle school for anything. It is actually the place where you make the most impact. It's the actually the place where you influence. I have a phrase I tell my students every day. You're not preparing for a high school, you're preparing for a college education. They know that, they expect that. They're gonna ask you a scenario and you're gonna have to respond with the knowledge that you have. Her love for learning has brought her back to her alma mater. As an adjunct professor, she shares her experience as a teacher and a principal with students who will one day follow in her path. Now that I teach the class, I tell them, I was sitting where you're sitting, and I don't care what your background is, you're gonna be where I'm standing. And so it's such rewarding to be out there. Her dedication to her students and education didn't go unnoticed. Last year, some of her colleagues and parents of students nominated Alma for the HEB Excellence in Education Award. The only problem was convincing Alma she deserved the recognition. 
because I thought, wow, there's such greater people out there that can really deserve, deserve this award. But I had a lot of people tell me, look, we've already submitted everything. The deadline is in two hours. It's 11 o'clock at night. If you do not push that button at midnight, you have just made all of us submit something that you don't believe in. So if you look at my application time, it was turned in on the last day around 11.53 p.m. And I turned it in, I pushed the button, and that was the end of that. But it wasn't the end. In March, she was surprised during what she thought was an assembly for her students with the announcement that she was a finalist for the award. And you are the reason this happened. As one of the finalists, Alma traveled to Houston for interviews. She felt honored just to be in the presence of so many other principals who believed in education as much as she did. Also the winner of $10,000 plus a $25,000 grant for his or her school is Alma Cardenas Rubio. Just being here is, is such an honor and it represented my community, it represented my university, it represented my BISD education. By her side has been her husband Francisco, her high school sweetheart, and her children, Manuel, Brittany, Katharina, Sally, and Lazaro. There's no way you can get to this point without a family. They've always supported this, this profession. They know that I see it as missionary. They know that I see it as God's calling. They know that I see it as my, my way to give back to a, a community that so much needs people that are passionate. You are <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you very much.